Hawaii's Plastic Beaches, another Galactic Graphics production by Peter Welter. Okay, I just arrived at the end of the paved road at Kale, or South Point, on the Big Island of Hawaii. We are looking north of the very remote beaches on the eastern shores of the Kau District. The water you see below is on the western side of South Point, which is sheltered from the northeasterly trades. In the background is a wind farm, and in the foreground are a couple of fish hoists. Fishermen use these hoists when the boat ramp on the eastern side of the point is too rough to haul out the small boats. Caves on the cliff provide nesting grounds for seabirds that dart quickly in and out bringing food for their hatchlings and mates. Patient bird watchers can sometimes see a flock of these birds emerge from the cliffs in unison as if spooked by an invisible intruder only to return as quickly as they fled. Some birds rest on ledges near the entrance, watching patiently as others fly in and out. They are like social greeters who seem oblivious to some birds and visibly outraged by others. At the base of the cliffs are networks of ropes and anchor buoys shared by the local fishermen. Often the buoys attract small fish which attract bigger fish, but this appears to be a mooring rock in the scene below. Today the waters are relatively calm and the boats are either out fishing or hauled out at the boat ramp on the other side of the point. A closer look at the hoist, which resembles a hastily constructed hangman scaffold, seems to hang onto the cliff with a precarious grip. A deep hole in the landscape reveals an underwater cave that opens up into a surging skylit tempest below. Visitors and locals both enjoy jumping into the hole at high tide, but today the tide is unusually low. Uh, from here we look south towards the tip of South Point. A small Coast Guard navigation light is the only visible indicator that visitors are at the southernmost point in the United States of America. Note that there is no signpost with X marks the spot or the typical signpost with distances and directions to the civilized places in the world. The only greeting sign is a dilapidated notice near the end of the paved road in a small bronze plaque close by that indicates the site is a national historic landmark. The white sand beach in this picture is near the ancient Polynesian village. This beach is not accessible to the average tourist unless you have all day to hike in and out. You'll need permission from the ranch owners above to traverse their land, or you will need to try and approach by sea. In calm weather, you can swim there from the mooring place, which has a steel ladder near one of the hoists to take you down to the water. What you will find is a pristine beach of fine coral sand. On the western or lee side of the point, the beaches are awesome. They are clean, uninhabited, and have an abundance of freshwater springs, food, and shelter for those who know how to find it. If you follow the trail to the tip of the point and head east, you will see a profound change in the topography. The cliffs become small remote beaches and tide pools that beg for exploration. Sheltered coves become windswept beaches, and currents create unpredictable eddies that follow the whims of the season and the tides. These conditions are inducive to life that thrives on tidal changes.
A panorama of the scenery shows us just how uninhabited this Hawaiian desert landscape is. Fortunately for the Hawaiians, this land is protected by royal decrees passed down from the Ali'i, who were the ancestors of the royal families who ruled this land. Were it not, there would no doubt be a handful of resorts nearby. This small beach passes many a day when not a single human steps foot on it. Tide pools thriving with life stretch for miles. Heukiuki bask in the midday sun. They are a tasty sea urchin relative of the spiny sea urchins. They thrive in colonies that could feed a hungry family with tasty urchin eggs after just a few minutes spent gathering them when the tide is out. Numerous small fish dart among the rocks and frolic with hermit crabs and the abundant land crabs that scamper about on the rocks. Seaweed, or limu as the Hawaiians call it, thrive in isolated patches that offer a vitamin-rich supplement to the native diet. Limpets like opihi and other crustaceans do well in the ever-changing seawater. Opihi, which is a relative of the abalone, is a prized and valuable commodity that is eaten raw for special occasions like weddings or birthday parties. It has become very difficult to find opihi in the more inhabited beaches in Hawaii, but here at South Point they are flourishing and easy to find. There's just one problem, you have to turn your attention from the sea to harvest them, and this has resulted in making opihi picking one of the most dangerous occupations in the islands. Small sea snails are also a delicacy and can be found in abundance here. As you can see, this awesome landscape in the southernmost region in the United States is a natural for conservationists, fishermen, and nature lovers to protect with a passion, and that surely is the reason for the protections already in place. But there's a new threat that sadly we can do little about for many years to come. These once pristine reefs and tidal pools are under attack by a man-made monster the size of Texas called the Great Pacific Gyre. What you see here is just a small sampling of the disaster that is coming our way here in Hawaii. The terrible destruction that a tsunami in Japan caused will mean vast amounts of floating debris 
was once again dumped into the Pacific where ocean currents will herd it into the gyre and eventually increase the amount drifting into Hawaii's beaches. The Pacific gyre is not mile after mile of plastic floating around like a giant landfill, as some think, but rather a heavy concentration of subsurface plastic bits that become like a vegetable soup made of multicolored plastic. Sunlight and wave action breaks plastic down into chunks and bits which eventually become even microscopic in size. It is an unnatural invader to the billions of years of ocean evolution that is the heritage of all who inhabit it. Currents take it south where long tentacles of this soup curl around the eastern side of the Big Island and are herded to the beaches on the eastern side of South Point where it makes landfall after decades of floating around in the ocean. The impact of this nutritionless floatsome on the wildlife is not yet fully understood, but the steady decline in seabirds bodes an ominous warning. Bear in mind that these clips were taken just around the corner from the lighthouse. The amount of trash steadily increases as we head up to the base of the peninsula towards Green Sand Beach and finally Kualualu Bay and the connected beaches. In a future report I will take you there too. But for now, just take a look at what is happening today. This problem is not some manufactured future disaster of a deranged liberal tree-hugging conservationist. It is here and now already. Just like the beginning of this movie, you may not see this pollution, but all you have to do is open your eyes and really look around, and you'll be surprised what you will see. Perhaps one of the more disturbing facts about this eyesore and death sentence for the sea life here is that this stuff, unlike most of nature's pestilence, has no value to anyone whatsoever. One can spend hours combing through this crop and not find one thing that is useful or even worth recycling. Plastic is, after all, made of petroleum. As this plastic degrades, it leaves behind toxic chemicals that Mother Nature never intended to have in such concentrations in the surface feeder's food chain. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this simple presentation.